All right, we are live. We are in the final series. We are on Daybreak. It's a PvP. It's do or die for both of these players. And we're going to go right into the player introductions. Spawning at the top of the map. Already lost one series to his opponent. But he is an innovative and cheesing bastard. Reppin' that color blue. Your Protoss player. House of Renegades, doohickey. And his opponent, also a Protoss, took the first series pretty handedly against his opponent. He's wearing that pink. He's in the bottom left of Daybreak. He's throwing down a cybernetic score. He is the pink Protoss player. Lucem de Elysium, Cloud. Alright, um, I was told to do a Bane voice, and I've never been able to truly accomplish perfecting it. So, this is live on air, pretty much first time. Let the games begin. That was fucking awful. Oh, I feel cringeworthy just doing it, but I did it anyway. Did it for my boy Saber. So, here we are. It is <laughs> game one of this series, and we already have some three gate action coming from Doohickey. Meanwhile, a Twilight Council is finished for um, Elysium Cloud. Okay, so I'm going to find out how I can follow my observer. Control shift, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. Control shift, oh. All right, I think I'm following you now. Okay. Now, we have some action going down in the main. And uh, it is, by way of doohickey, he's pulling in a stalker and a zealot. And uh, he actually might have able to snipe this mothership core. That would be pretty ridiculous. Um, but the mothership core dancing out of the way, finally, as these probes get us around on the, uh, the zealot. Um, the probes are going to go ahead and go back to their respective mineral lines as the uh, purple, not purple, the pink protoss is just kind of chilling, not really doing much else. Um, what, what, is, what is going on here? Why is it falling? Okay, we have three more stalkers coming in here. Photon number charge goes down for the uh, um, pink player approach. Jesus Christ, what am I doing right now? Okay, Doohickey putting a forward pylon in the base, trying to reinforce. He's four gating right now, or three gating. He's got three gates. He's three gating right now. Um, he's warping in stalkers. And uh, Cloud looking to defend this early pressure with the Dark Shrine, actually. So he's going to be warping in um, some DTs here shortly. There's the first ET, uh, no detection for Doohickey. He's going to have to pull back or else he's just going to lose all this stuff. He's going to try and snipe uh, one gate uh, and instead he's just going to go home now. That D Dark Templar is going to go ahead and finish up that. Um, nope, he's just going to keep pursuing instead of going towards the pylon and the probe. We do have a forward DT going into the main of, do of uh, Cloud, rather. So we have uh, some action going on in that respect. GG, holy cow. Final series of the evening. It is, uh, of course, another Protoss versus Protoss. It is the map overgrowth. Uh, and if one player wins this, he'll be qualifying another round of 16. So we'll go right into the introductions for you. Spawning in the bottom left corner. He uh, is pretty cheesy. He's been coming up with some great plays. He's currently one game down, fighting for his tournament life, trying to qualify another round of 16. Your blue Protoss player. House of Renegades, Doohickey. And his opponent in the top right, currently in the lead 
one game in hand, looking to steady it out and take the last uh, game in this series and progress on to the round of 16. Already won a series against his opponent. He is the upper right of overgrowth, your pink Protoss player. Lucem de Elysium, Cloud. All right, so I am already wrong. I called a uh, predicted um, proxy two racks out of Doohickey, but he did do that at all. Um, Doohickey is going to go ahead and send a bit of a probe up there to the top left of the base. Um, let's see if he's or the top left of the map rather. Let's see if he's going to do anything like I don't know, hide a Twilight Council and a Dark Shrine, which is typically what he's been doing uh, in these series. Um, especially with Doohickey, he seems to be more the uh, innovative throwing tech around the base, or the maps rather, um, trying to hide stuff, trying to be crafty. And Cloud is uh, showing that he understands that, and he's using his probe to continue scouting around in some, some parts of the map, especially looking for the proxy, uh, proxy uh, gates and pylons. Um, if we do go check out the uh, main of Doohickey again, um, he's throwing down some extra buildings, but that probe is still going around, and there is a pylon, so let's see if that probe's going to see it. He does stop at one of the third expos, uh, and nothing doing thus far. Uh, nothing too crazy coming out of Cloud currently in his main. He's got Warp Gate Research and both gases taken. Um, typical standard safe build out of him, making sure he's not going to be caught off guard. Um, of course, he can throw down um, a robo if he needs to. Um, and indeed, he throws down... Uh, let me check. He's going to actually throw down uh, a robo, uh, right? Basically, when uh, Doohickey throws down his Dark Shrine. And if you look where he threw that down, it was in the top left of the base. So Doohickey not straying um, away from his... Uh, nature at all trying to make it work with the dts um and cloud has a really good read on this game and already has the robo uh to get the detection out so if the dts don't really do the job for do hickey let's see if he can progress into some sort of two base play or something like that uh because he's not notorious for it but we do actually have a uh, ford pylon morphin out for our uh blue Protoss, and he does take a second. So these Dark Shrines are going to look to buy some time. Uh, the Dark Templars, rather, are going to look to buy some time for uh, Doohickey. And instead of doing the typical one base play that he's been notorious for in the past couple of days, or past couple of games, rather, he has uh, gone and taken an expansion. A hallucinated Phoenix coming out from Cloud to see if he can get a uh, feel for what's going on in the game. Is not going to take his second yet because I think he's being aware of what could happen. We do have one forward Dark Templar making its way in, but an Observer already on the field for Cloud in a good position. Uh, he sees everything that's going on, and he's going to go ahead and shoot that uh, little Dark Templar away. He's going to get the kill on the probe that was going to try and build at the natural and get out with his life at least. Dark Templars are... Uh, exceedingly quick. A lot of people notoriously underestimate how fast they are, specifically people who play Terran. Um, I'm notoriously uh, bad at taking care of DTs if I don't have ghosts or turrets because you scan and the next thing you know they've just ran outside of your um, scan circle. A later second has gone down for uh, Cloud and Doohickey, but with the, he does have a slight supply advantage um, and Doohickey is slightly uh, supply blocked at the time. He is using his chrono on his nexuses, pounding out those probes to get his economic advantage further um, in field. We do have uh, a fully saturated main onto the natural for Doohickey as he is actually doing something a little cheesy, which is to say he's macroing. The cheesiest thing a cheesy player can do is play a macro game. He's uh, warping out immortals, so his response to this, what he saw with his Dark Templar, is to go ahead and start making immortals. Um, and he does have those on the way out of the robotics. No more Dark Templars are being made, and we also have uh, no more, let me check, no more on the field except for the one. So uh, no Archons as of yet. Two hallucinated Phoenixes are going to do absolutely nothing to each other, but they are going to get a view of um, what the other's army composition is, and Cloud is going to note that he indeed has a bigger one right now. Um, supply has actually now gone in favor of Doohickey, as he did get the earlier um, Nexus, and the Chrono is real. He does have his upgrades on the way uh, in terms of, I think, it's plus one attack for Forge. So does Cloud, though. And you know what? Both players are seeing each other, and they, they kind of like what they see. The robotics facility for um, Cloud, he's now getting 
a uh, robotics bay up. Meanwhile, Doohickey is producing two warp, or rather, a warp prism right now out of his um, robotics facility, looking to get some harassment done. Uh, both the simulators taken at the natural cloud. We see uh, basically this game has gone into a bit chill stage. More hallucinated phoenixes, uh, just making sure that that army is not pushing out anytime soon. Doohickey actually getting um, a bit of the build order win at this point in time. The fake out with the DTs, he didn't invest as much into that as I think Cloud would have rather predicted. The thing Doohickey is doing a little bit though is he's getting a little caught in the supply blockage. Maybe it won't be as big a deal, but of course, never want that to happen as he throws down two more gates in his main. His Dark Templar does have the Zelnaga Watchtower, uh, which is always good to have. Um, there are a couple more Dark Templars on the map now, so um, he's warp taking those up into his Warp Prism, and we're going to see some harassment um, find its way out that way. There is, let me see what's coming across the map for uh, Hallucinated Phoenix, so it's not going to see it, um, and there's no observer or any sort of map awareness um, for Cloud to know that this Warp Prism is coming in. So if we go ahead and take a look into Cloud's main base, let's see what sort of defenses he has uh, to deal with the warp prism that is about to make its way into uh, the, uh, the main. He's also, he just created another uh, what looked to be a Dark Templar, so um, there's nothing doing here. He doesn't have anything. He's going to spot the warp prism. Let's see what Cloud's reaction is. He does photon overcharge, but two Dark Templars, they're going to go right for the Nexus. I don't know if that's a great idea. The Observer's already there. He needs to be working on the probes before uh, the Observer's come. And there's a cannon there already, so you know Dark Templar's not doing anything. Uh, he did manage to pull the army back, um, but with nothing else in conjunction with this attack, Doohickey in reality not getting anything done for the lost Dark Templar. Uh, cannons now going down in the mineral lines of uh, both uh, Doohickey's, uh, no, rather Clouds' main and natural, um, of course, to dissuade any further Dark Templar action. Uh, pretty good idea, of course, and uh, we haven't actually seen that from a lot of the Protoss players tonight. Doohickey has gone and morphed an Archon out of those DTs. He does have a, a small push coming, and I believe he hallucinated a Colossus in that army, just to make it a little, little more powerful looking than it actually is. Um, yes, he did hallucinate a Colossus, but it's not going to last very long, so I don't know exactly what that's for. Um, if you go to the, to the third of Doohickey, he has actually taken it, so that's a pretty key uh, point because this is all a fake. I don't think he's going to um, invest into this in any meaningful way. He's not going to try and really make this work. He's going to try and keep Cloud pinned up in his second long enough to get his third up and running and then see that advantage out into a late game. He does have High Templar now, um, and he does have three producing underneath that warp prism and he's going to go ahead and morph them into an archon. I don't believe he has storm but we can check for you shortly. Da, 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 there's my units not upgrades. Gee. Uh, no storm but we do have Colossus range for cloud so that might pay dividends. Um, we do have uh, both players researching plus two uh, attack um, and armor coming in for cloud so he might have a slight uh, advantage once that finishes. Uh, the Nexus is about to finish up as well as um, the robotics uh, bay for Doohickey, but the third is going down. Here's the engagement. The Zealot's actually getting in on the one Colossus and they managed to catch him out. Immortal's putting out a lot of DPS. There's another Colossus a little late to the party. Um, this army is getting a little bit surrounded by uh, Cloud, but Doohickey's Archon's able to put out a lot of damage. The Immortal's putting out a lot of DPS as well. This is going heavily in favor of Doohickey. Takes out the second Colossus. Uh, actually, all Colossus are down now. He just has to target this third. Um, you know, heavily in favor of Doohickey. He's going to be able to cancel the third. A uh, really good push from Doohickey down to 59 supplies Cloud and in a really bad position. Honestly, I thought this was going to be just a kind of a fake to see if he could... Um, you know, keep his third for a long enough period of time to get it really into the game, but this could win in the game, this push. There's only uh, zealots in there. You know what? A photon overcharge is not enough to stop you from doing this. I think Doohickey needs to read the game a little bit better and say, you know what? I need to go in and push. I've got the uh, I've got the advantage, but then again, it's not a bad idea to just wait, consolidate, and say, you know what? I need to get more units. And I'm happy to stay here. I have to, now you have to do something. I'm going to get my immortals back and get them a little bit of buffer. There's the GG called, and Doohickey ties up the series. All right, we are three minutes into this game already on uh, Shakura's Plateau, so we're going to go ahead and get right into the player introductions, spawning in the bottom right corner in the ace match. It is your blue cheese and bastard Protoss. House of Renegades, doohickey. And his opponent, horizontal spawn, bottom left. 
showing that he can play the standard game, but getting beat by his own uh, tricks last game because his opponent was able to uh, take uh, take the old adage by the hood. It was the uh, old "How do you cheese if you're a cheeser?" Well, you macro, and he was able to take advantage of that and take it and tie it up. Game uh, two, one to one. He is also fighting for his tournament life, trying to qualify in the round of 16. Your pink Protoss player. Lucem de Elysium, Cloud. This is it, boys. Right, getting right into situation at hand. Last game, Doohickey able, like I said, to take advantage of uh, his opponent predicting one base all in, and more so predicting uh, a bit more cheesy action to come out of him. And he went and took some expansions and uh, was able to realize that advantage into an army advantage and, and really uh, make it. Uh, you know, a game that was it resembled more so a regular PV, more conventional PvP as opposed to the craziness that we've been seeing thus far. But just as I say that, there is a probe in the top left of the map for Doohickey. He already has uh, his dar uh, robotics facility going up, but he has a Twilight Council. So let's see if he throws down a pylon or two uh, and uh, throws up a uh, a dark shrine, which would be which would be the typical. Uh, do hickey thing to do. I want to go ahead and be honest about. He already has a dark shrine. Where is it? Where's the dark shrine? There's a dark shrine. He already has a dark shrine. I thought he was going to put it away from the map. Instead, he puts it in his main. Thank you for reminding me, Savior. He has dark shrine in his main, so we are going to see DTs. And actually, there's a DT on the map right now. So there's there's uh, the observer for Cloud. So you know what? Everything happened in just the same as it did last game. But this DT is going to get absolutely shredded. Doesn't even pick up a kill, um, and he has lost. Uh, a Dark Templar for essentially nothing. Cloud has lost one probe, but, um, you know, was it a good uh, investment? Of course, Doohickey doing the Dark Shrine thing every game thus far for the most part um, and keeping Cloud on his toes in terms of having to get a robotics bay out and get an observer out. Um, if we look at the base of Doohickey, he pretty much goes instantly into making Immortals, which is not a bad idea because uh, for the most part, Cloud has used his uh, robotics facility time to go ahead and make an observer. So Doohickey says, if you've used that time to make an observer, I'm going to start making immortals. Um, Cloud himself is getting out an immortal, um, but it is a little bit later uh, than uh, Doohickey's, who already has his immortal on the map. Hallucinated Phoenix is going to come in from Cloud. He's been doing a really good job with these, um, getting the scouts and the uh, uh, noting the building composition and timings of his opponent, um, but also Doohickey's doing okay with the scouting as well. Both players have already taken their naturals, um, and they've essentially been okay with seeing what each other is doing. Um, gate's going down. Of course, Warp Gate is researched. Um, you're not going to ever uh, forsake that unless you're doing some proxy gatage, which Doohickey uh, has been pulling off in these couple past games. But this one, I think, relying more so on a standard build, a safe build to see him through to the mid-game because I think he uh, played last game out pretty standard and, and was surprised and at how easily he's able to take it. And I think he's confident now in his own abilities to be able to see through um, a sort of army versus army fight. Um, we don't see much in by way of either player moving out or doing anything crazy. Of course, Cloud putting his army on the natural ramp, just chilling there. If he has to take any engagements, he can force a choke. Hallucinated Phoenix for Cloud going to go around and see that the exact same thing is being done by Doohickey. Both players know their PvP, it seems like, and uh, are happy to sit back and wait until uh, any sort of advantage is eked out. Or, you know what, and wait until they have the army that they want to push out and, uh, and do some damage. Upgrades on the way. We have plus one attack for both players. It's a little earlier for Cloud than it is for Doohickey. Uh, meanwhile, he does put his army down near here at the natural. Going to go ahead and take out that hallucinated phoenix, but not push out any further. The... Uh, Forward pylon for Doohickey is actually in a pretty good position, not only for um, warp ends, but he's going to be able to note if Cloud is going to go ahead and try and take that um, that expansion. 
uh, that he would be able to either warp in to deny it, and he would be able to see the timing of it. So uh, plus one about the finish up for Cloud uh, in terms of attack, but he's not going to really see through that um, advantage anytime soon. He's going to hallucinate another Phoenix, send it across, doing this uh, fairly standard uh, as we see a warp prism with two DTs in it going across because uh, it's a very short distance on Shekhar's plateau. Um, he is going to go ahead and warp in probably a couple more uh, to uh, to aid in this. There aren't any cannons in that main, so this could do a potentially a havoc. This could wreak a lot of chaos, and uh, these two DTs kind of not really doing anything. They went, they got caught between two worlds. Do I go left? Do I go right? And instead, they didn't do anything. And now the observer, well, it's there, and they're probably going to get shot. Anyway, are they going to go for any probes? Now the photon overcharge is called. They get one probe, two probe, couple, and then they're gone. I feel like that could have gone a lot worse. And Doohickey got caught between two worlds of going left, right, due to a little bit of a wall off. The supply pylons in the back of the main. Oh, there is a DT in the natural, um, but if you look at the spy pylons in the back of the main, they are locking down any of the gaps between the mineral patches, so the DTs could not go right in to the mineral line, which is a really nifty thing um, that Cloud has done, which is demonstrating his game knowledge. Uh, Cloud also saw the pylon at the third expansion um, that he could be taking and took it out, resulting in a slight supply block for Doohickey as two uh, pylons do finish up. There's a hallucinated phoenix that's going to go on and get a good scout and good read on the army composition. Very similar builds uh, between the two players by way of units, um, but for some reason Doohickey's thrown down a couple cannons, uh, and he also is getting Templar archives. Uh, so we will see temp uh, archons versus colossus. Essentially, is what we're going to be seeing. Um, he still has his warp prism that survived, so uh, good on him. But he doesn't have a, a you know. It seems like his army is less. That's just what it seems like from looking at it. But if you look at the supplies, they're dead even. Um, production, t we've got uh, plus two upgrades sooner for Doohickey by way of attack. Um, there's a Colossus and now a Templar Archives on the way for Cloud as well. So builds uh, not very different from either player aside from the uh, Robotics Bay going down for um, Cloud as opposed to Doohickey. Uh, he's got a nifty little uh, gamer clan um, portrait there, or whatever, what you call it, picture. This army is going to move out. They're going to catch a zealot. It knows exactly what's going down now. Cloud knows where that army's at. Um, and he does have a reinforcing pylon there in the, the high ground of one of the expansions. Uh, so we have one class with this army and a lot of zealots. I think Cloud's got this handled if a bad engagement is taken. Um, he is going to go ahead and chrono on that uh, upgrade, try and get that advantage as quickly as he can. He's merging three archons. So now Doohickey's got. Uh, the army that I think he sees fit uh, and is probably going to try and make something happen here shortly. If not, he's actually taking a third on his side of the base right now, so um, he might be just trying to pin in Cloud and uh, say, you know what, you're not going to be able to take a third while I do. And this is a really good idea because if he is able to realize an economic advantage, the late game, now the engagement is going to happen. There are force fields going down, trying to block off parts of his army, but the Archons, of course, can bust through. Archon's putting out a lot of AoE damage on these Zealots to see if the Zealots can get on top of Cloud's army as they do. Now the Archons are realizing their weight in gold. My goodness, they're putting a lot of damage and the Mortals are outnumbering Cloud. Cloud is going down in supplies, down to 65 supply, and this is going heavily in favor by way of Doohickey. Doohickey taking a regularly standard game against Cloud.